like to start today by sending out my um, condolences and prayers to um, Pastor Stephen Darby's family. He passed away um, a week ago this past Friday. And um, he was a young man, so to me his death came as a surprise because I believe that he was trying to wake up the body of Christ and he was exposing uh, a, a lot about witchcraft and, and the occultic things that, that the enemy is doing. And we all, I believe, who are genuine about our walk with Christ is under huge spiritual attack because just like how we are committed to Christ, the people who are serving Lucifer is committed to him and they see us as their enemies. And so through their magic and their witchcraft and all the occultic things that they're doing and they're bold and brazen with it right now. They're conjuring up demon spirits and they got the uh, science community. They have CERN and they have money and power because Satan is the god of this world and the systems that we live in, the educational, and you hear me say this all the time, that that's the beast system and those of us who are living in this world, the Lord tells us we are in the world, but we are not of the world. So we are in a world that is governed and regulated by Satan. And those of us who, well, I'll say the body of Christ, people who believed in Christ 20, 30 years ago, a lot of those older people have died out. And so the remnant of people who's left in the earth that's trying to stay faithful and committed is few and there's only a remnant but the majority of the people in all of these major organizations I'll call them who say that they are Christians really are in the Luciferian churches and the occultic things and the paganistic things that they're doing in the church is really going along with Satan's agenda and help to conjure up demon spirits and give them a stronghold and give them power and strength and also when you look into the thing I was sharing with you all about the Moloch and the sacrificing of children. It's an underground network of the governments and, the, and, the, and all of the Luciferian people who are sacrificing and destroying through abortion or children's sacrifices. They are adding more strength and more power to darkness in this world. But the scripture tells us that greater is he who is in us than he who is in this world. And that we who are in Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. But the Lord also said that the children of this world is wiser than the children of light. So we need to pray to God to give us wisdom and to give us discernment. And we need to make sure examine our, that we examine our hearts and our lives to make sure that we don't have one foot in the world and one foot in the, in the kingdom of God and, and be deceived into thinking that we are okay with God but not be okay with God. The scripture says that it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. In Psalms 139, it says that each day of our life is scheduled. So our life is scheduled and even though the enemy is raging against us and sending all type of occultic things against us, if we are walking up rightly with God, the enemy cannot destroy us without God's approval or God's allowing it to take place so even though it, our hearts even my heart I actually cried when I heard that Pastor Darby had passed away and I know his family's heart is heavy and burdened and my prayers will continue to be with them but don't forget that God is always still in control that's why we have to stay in faith we walk by faith and not by sight no matter what's going on no matter what's coming against us no matter how it looks no matter what we think the Lord Jesus Christ and Almighty God the Most High God is still in control amen, amen. all right so today I also want to start in James the book of James because we should be mindful of how brief life can be and we need to put our emphasis and our focus back on Jesus I know we all like to know what's what the end time is going to be like and we want to be stimulated by the latest thing but the most important thing is to make sure our, our calling and election is sure okay James chapter 4 
God. And let's look at the second part of, of, line, of the first line of verse. It says, today, well, I'll start from the beginning. It says, go to now, you that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes. For that, because of that, you ought to say, if the Lord will, and you hear me say this often, we, will, we shall live and do this or that. Because even though each day of our life is scheduled, only God knows that schedule. We don't know that schedule. So we ought to live every day with that mindset. And everything we plan or think to do, we ought to say, tomorrow I'll see you, or tomorrow I'll do such and such, if the Lord wills. Okay, because it's all based on the Lord's will. Now I want to jump back into John. I want to go to John, the Gospel John. Because there's only one body. And when one hurts, we all should hurt. When one grieves, we all should grieve because we part of the same body. And what the enemy is doing is trying to bring confusion and division between the body of Christ so that no one, everybody, I'll say, most all everyone, is frustrated and confused and is looking for answers and understanding. And our answers and our understanding is in Christ. And as long as we are on this earth, we're going to see through a glass darkly. We're not going to ever understand everything. So we need to find a place in Christ that we could be at peace, where we can rest, where we can go back to the simplicity, 17, John 17. The complicity that is in Christ. There's, there's some there's simplicity, simplicity that is in Christ. Where he doesn't want us to be worried. He doesn't want us to be anxious. And he doesn't want us to be afraid. And he don't want us to think that we are God. Because we have to walk in love and humility. Am I making sense to you so far? In John 17, Jesus Christ purchased his body with his own blood. And there's only one Father and one Spirit and one Lord and one church. And when we get all divided and confused, we we not we missing the mark and we falling into Satan's agenda. It's chapter 17, verse 20, it says, this would be Jesus speaking. He says, neither pray I for these alone. He's talking to praying for his disciples, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So this would be their word that was inspired by God. So that would mean that Jesus is not just praying for them who he saw, who walked with him, but he's praying for them who believe on, on him through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, by us being one, by us believing in Jesus Christ and believing that he is the only begotten son of the Father. Turn to Ephesians. I was really, really blessed by the, the songs, the songs. We're supposed to encourage each other and, and worship God through hymns and songs. Turn to Ephesians 4. Because it says, make sure the songs we're singing, we were singing says, make sure your election is sure and your calling. So that's a confirmation for me that I'm speaking what God wants me to speak today, which is what I pray for regularly. Verse 1 of chapter 4 of Ephesians says, I therefore, Paul speaking, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation, the vocation is the calling, whatever it is you call to do, wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another, underline, forbearing one another in, in love, 
endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, in the bond of peace. We should try to have peace, promote peace, love, forbearing one another, and meekness and lowliness. None of us is greater than the other. We all should walk in lowliness because there is one body, one Holy Spirit, even as you are called and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one Father, one baptism, and this is really awesome, one God and one Father of all, who is above all, nobody on earth, it says, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Not one person over anyone else. You get my drift? You know who I'm talking about? All right. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So we all have grace according to the measure that was given to us by Christ. There's one body, one Father, no substitute Father on this earth. One Father who is above all. The Father in heaven is the one who's above all. Am I making sense? All right. I want to turn to Romans. This is going to be a short message today. Romans chapter 16. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus Christ. People trying to get rid of the Father, the Son. People don't want to give honor to the Son. But He is a good God. Romans 16. And I want to show you, this is not any denomination. I don't care all of these, we got Methodists, we got Episcopalian, we got Mormonism, we got Catholicism, we got the Seventh-day Adventists, and they all are saying that they are Christians. But this verse of scripture, scriptures in verse 16, Romans 16, 16 says, Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ. Christ is the only one who died for his church. So we shouldn't identify ourselves in any other way other than we belong to Christ. We are part of his body. He's the one who shed his blood. There's no father over us. There's no anyone who's over us. And I pray that the Lord help me to speak this. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. And listen to this, avoid them. Isn't that something? For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Avoid them who teaches a different doctrine that they people want to bow down to somebody else who claim I, they got revelation through, a, through an angel that gave them information that is contrary to the word of God. The scriptures say avoid them. Operate in love and hu humility. There's only one body. There's only one Lord. That one Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who died for a church. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Is this making sense to you today? We need to make sure we work, we are walking uprightly with the Lord. That our hearts are right. That it's not about us. It's not about putting anybody down, but praying for people. Praying for those who you perceive is missing the mark. You know, pray. Pray for God to give them wisdom. Pray for God to help you to not be a rejecter of the truth, but a lover of the truth. Pray that you are not lukewarm. That you are a genuine worshiper. Examine yourselves. Examine your hearts. Examine your lives. Because time is short and life is short. 
And everybody think that they have 10 years, 20 years. You think you're going to live for a long time and you don't know when your last day is coming on this earth. And I honestly do think about this almost every day. I, I think often. Whenever I'm planning something, I think, Lord, am I going to be able to see this through? You know, I, I, I lived this way for a long time. And I'm encouraging you to examine your heart. Because you don't want your soul to go to hell because you live pleasing your flesh in this world. Okay? Ephesians, I'm sorry, Colossians chapter 3. And let's start at verse 16. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. We ought to be teaching and encouraging and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Not rock and roll music and, and, and neon lights and all that stuff that's going on where people got, got the lights off in the building that they call the church and got smoke and rock-like type environment and they say they're in church. This says, encourage, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts, to the Lord, to the Lord. But what people do is they're singing and encouraging and lifting up the person who's singing the music. Because the music is stimulating you in a way that you're not supposed to be stimulated. Your heart is supposed to be on Christ Jesus. You're, you're supposed to be singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs in your hearts to Jesus Christ. It's, 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 it's sad what's taking place in the world. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Thank you, Lord. I pray that, that the Lord bless his body. I love the body of Christ. I love people. And I pray often for God to help me to walk in love. And humility and I pray that the Lord allow me to live holy and righteous and help me to be a godly witness and a godly example in the earth and I I do this because I love God and I pray that anything about my life that can lead you into a closer walk with Jesus Christ that that it would happen that you wouldn't just listen to my words or that you wouldn't just listen to these words, that you just wouldn't be a hearer of God's words, but that you would want to do his word, that you would want to live out right, live holy and righteously before him, that you would want to be a witness and, and, and bring glory and honor to God, that you would get your heart and your mind off of the world and off of yourselves and just love people and, 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 and promote unity in the body of Christ. Don't try to cause confusion and dissension and division. And remind, be remindful that you only have a short period to live here. And you don't know how long that's going to be. Let your life count for something. Am I making sense? In Ephesians chapter 1, look at verse 15. It says, Wherefore also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus... And love unto all the saints. We all are saints who believe and accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. Not because some man or lady say you are a saint. You are a saint because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says he ceased not to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayers. That the God, this is a prayer I often encourage people to pray. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of him. It's about him, Jesus. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know it, you need it to be enlightened so that you might know what is the hope of 
his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is his Jesus inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us would to us would who believe who believe according to the working of his mighty power who believe because of the working of his mighty power you didn't believe because somebody convinced you or, or, or got you all emotional you believe because of the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things, all things under his feet. All things has been placed under Christ's feet. And gave him to be Christ is the head. Christ. Not any man on earth. But Christ is the head. Over all things to the church. To Christ's church. Christ is the head of all things. Not anybody else. Which is his body. His body is the fullness of him that fills it all in all. We are his body here on this earth. <coughs> is this making sense to you so far? God loves his people. He died for us. Go back to Colossians. Thank you, Father. Chapter 2. You have to make up your mind which side you're going to be on. You can't be on both sides. And time is winding down. And evil is ramping up. So you need to make sure you're, you're in the right place and you're doing the right things. Colossians 2. Verse 8. Says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ I'm going to read that again it says beware be alert you got to be be aware because any man lest any man spoil you and they can spoil you through philosophy and then deceit and after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. So beware, because they can use all of these other things to deceive you and it not have anything to do with Christ. Do you see that? For in him, in Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form when he walked on this earth. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Because it's talking about your heart. And putting off the body of, of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Who has raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins. And the uncircumcision of your flesh. Has he quickened together with him. Having forgiven all your trespasses. That alone because your trespasses has been forgiven is enough to make you want to live holy and righteous and be an example to God in this world. Turn to Romans 13. I'm sorry, Romans 12. Romans 12. I pray that this word God anointed and that it, it provokes you to want to draw closer to God. To understand life is short. 
to tomorrow, today is not promised to anyone. So today, make sure whatever you do brings glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ who, who died for you. Romans 12, verse 4 says, For as we have many members in one body, we have eyes, hands, feet, a kidney, a heart, many members in one natural body. They all members have not the same office. They don't do the same thing. So we, being many, are one body in Christ. There's a lot of different ones of us, and we have different calling on our lives. Everyone members of another. So we are part of the same body, but we have a different calling. We have a different function. We have a different thing that we're supposed to be doing. But we all who really genuinely believes in Christ, we are part of the same body. So if somebody hits your hand or your foot, your whole body is going to feel the effect of it. And that's the way God the Father through the Holy Spirit designed it to be. And God the Father designed it so that only Jesus Christ is the head. There's only one head. And all of us is part of that one body. We have a different function to serve. And it's up to us to make sure that our election is calling us sure. That we examine ourselves to make sure that we are in the faith and we are not being spoiled or deceived by, you know, vain men's philosophy or the tradition of men. Am I making sense in what I'm saying to you all today? Because I think it's serious and sobering to see someone so young die without any, any, just all of a sudden just drop dead and dies. And it can happen to anyone. And no one knows. Only God has our schedule. Turn to Galatians. Thank you, Father. If you love God, then you have to desire to be pleasing to him. The enemy is hard at work trying to destroy God's creation. All, even the earth he's trying to destroy. Most people don't even know the evil things that's taking place in the earth. We know about the fires in California. And people have videos showing where um, direct energy weapon was directed and caused the fires. Cars are burning to the point where they are melting. No regular fire gets that hot to, to, to melt to melt. Um, cars, the, the whole frame of the cars are melted. The blocks are melted. Usually when a house burns down, only the part that burns is the wood. The, the stone usually is left charred, but it doesn't melt or, 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 or turns to ashes. So the enemy is trying to destroy humanity. That's why I'm trying my, my level best to sound an alarm and to wake people up and, and tell you to turn back to Jesus. Don't get caught up in men's tradition and all of the things that's taken place. Go back to the simplicity that is in Christ because it's only in Christ that you should be living, moving, and having your being. It's only in Christ Jesus. Am I making sense? Galatians 6. And let's look at verse 7. Be not deceived. Don't, don't allow yourself to be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For if, that, if he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap, Corruption. If you live every day to please your flesh, then what you're going to be reaping is, is corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit, if you, if you worship God in songs, in hymns, and you sacrifice being different from your neighbors and the people you work with and the people who you go to school with, it's a sacrifice. If you sow to the Spirit, that's how you sow to the Spirit, by being different, by worshiping God, by praying, by reading the Scriptures, by studying the Scriptures, then shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. But if you sow to your spirit, to your flesh, you're not going to reap everlasting life. You're going to reap corruption is what this scripture is saying. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So you be, you're going to be tempted to faint. 
But don't faint because if you faint, you're not going to read according to the scripture. Am I making sense? Turn to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10. Talking to the Hebrews. Chapter 10. Let's look at verse 30. Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Lord. I also want to take this opportunity to thank the people on YouTube who sent us this ministry words of encouragement. It means a lot, and we do appreciate them. Okay? Um, Hebrews 10 verse 30 says, For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongs unto me. God speaking, I will recompense, says the Lord. Again, the Lord shall judge, the Lord shall judge his people. I want you to underline verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. People don't have reverence for God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The enemy is seducing and baiting and luring people to commit sin away from God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Turn to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at verse 14. Let's look at verse 14. Revelation 3, 14. It says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. The Laodiceans is the lukewarm church. I think it's the last time church. It's this church. The church of the day we live in. These things says the Amen. So be it. The faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. This would be Jesus speaking. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So God is saying you can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom and be lukewarm. He's saying it's better for you to either be all the way on his side or all the way on the other side. Because if you're in the middle, he's, you make him sick. He's going to vomit you out of his mouth. So some people think that they can go to church on Sunday. And then Monday through Saturday, they can drink. They can party. They can commit fornication. They can commit adultery. They can steal. They can lie. They can do everything they want to do. And then come to church back on Sunday and think that they're okay with God. You're being deceived. You understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You're being deceived. And one thing about deception. You can think that you're okay. And not even be able to realize that you're not okay. Until somehow God convicts you. Or someone speaks something to you to cause you to examine yourself. It's, it's when you start to examine yourself and go deep within your own self to, to look at your life. To think about the things you say. The things you do. The things you, you, you allow to come into you. When you move away from that thing. Take a step back from that. And then look at those things. That's when you are able to see how bad it is sometimes you've been deceived. Because when you're doing something wrong, your mind, your flesh, convinces you to justify why it's okay to do it. But when the Lord starts dealing with you, when you look at those things that you 
justified that was okay to do when the Lord is dealing with you, you are able to look at those things and see how awful and how ugly and how bad and how wrong it is when you sin and try to justify your sin would be okay with God. I'm saying this because we are at a point in time in history where we really need to know where we stand with Christ Jesus. We need him. We need his guidance. We need his wisdom. We need his discernment. And we need his protection more than any other time I believe in history. Because the technology, the evil, the, the darkness that anyone, if they just open their eyes a little bit, would be able to see. It would cause you to know that there's a time, this is the time when we need to be right. Sin is an abomination to God. Sin hurts the heart of God. And he sent Jesus Christ to give us a way out. To give us a way of escaping. And escaping means we live for him every day in this world. We are in this world, but we don't allow ourselves to be a part of this world. And that's a sacrifice. That's a living sacrifice. That's what he means when he say presents your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. You living in this world in the midst of the sodomy, in the midst of all of the witchcraft and the and the evil things that's taking place. You don't allow yourselves to become so desensitized to these things that you start to say it's okay and, and, and what's, the, what's the cause? What's, what's the harm in people being that way or acting that way? Don't ever allow yourself to be so desensitized to the things of this world that you stop being an example and a witness for Christ in this world. Am I making sense? Because judgment day is coming. And it's a horrible thing to fall into the hand of a living God. And that's what I want to speak on today. All right? All right. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray, Father, that your word take deep root in us, Lord. And that your words would root out of us anything in us, Lord, that is not of you, Lord. That we would be a living example of holiness and righteousness in this world, Father. And we pray, Holy Father, that you would... Oh, forgive us for the evil things that we've done to grieve or quench the Holy Spirit of your living God, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your obedience. We thank you for redeeming us, Lord. And we pray, Father, that you would help us to not grow weary in well-doing and that we would not cast away our confidence in you, which has a great recompense of reward. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord.